Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chad. This week we are finishing up slash continuing on with the Japanese From Zero series. If you haven't seen those, you guys should totally go check those out before you come check this one out. It's gonna save this video a ton of time because I already go over the format and everything that I like and dislike about the books. This one we're talking about content because these books more or less are the same format. So I'm trying to save you guys some time. So this week, how does the entire Japanese From Zero series come together? Is it worth your money? Is it not worth your money? Is it too much, too little, too slow, too girthy? No such thing. Let's find out. Real quick before we step into the video, I have an announcement that will affect about three weeks of my uploads coming up here shortly. So if you would like to know about that, I won't put that here. Go check out the subscriber on the outro. Stay after the outro and you'll be able to find out all about that then. Alrighty, we're back! Yeah! And we finally get to finish the books that were gifted to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you if you were one of the people that sent these out to me. I really appreciate you. I've already done book one and I've done the kanji book and now we're checking out books three, which is the middle, and book five, which is the final book. To hopefully give us kind of an overarching picture, roughly, what is the Japanese from Zero method? What is it like? How does it equate to the other books that teach you beginner Japanese? So without further ado, let's jump right into it. What the hell's that doing here? Hey, what's going on everybody? My name, of course, is Chad, and this week we are going to be finishing up, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, finishing up the Japanese From Zero series that I was gifted by some members of my community. So thank you guys so much. If you guys are not regular watchers of my channel, that's a-okay, you should be. But I have already reviewed book one, as well as the kanji book. Uh, those are on my channel. You should go check those out if you want a real in-depth look inside the book, my thoughts, opinions on the method. But the truth of the matter is, as I uh, flip this open and you shall see, minus the addition of uh, basically more words, like the words seem to scale up the farther you go in, you get more each and every chapter. It's more or less the same format. So if you wanna see my thoughts on the format, on what the actual content of it is, you can check that out. Uh, this video, however, is going to be talking about what exactly is inside books three, the middle book, and books five, the last book, hopefully with an attempt to get kind of a scale because I don't have books two and four. But I figure if we've reviewed the first book, you guys are gonna see what the middle of the series is like and what the end of the series is like. Uh, and you can make an educated decision. Hey, is it worth investing in Japanese from zero? Should I go with one of the other major brands, the Minas, the Genkis? All of that and more starts with this nice young lady. This is Japanese from zero three. This is the middle of five books produced by the, the legendary, the infamous George Trombley Jr. And as I said before, it is formatted basically the same. Uh, why fix what's not broken, I suppose. And as with all my reviews, I will say I'm only going to show you what is absolutely necessary for me to make an adequate review, uh, giving my thoughts on the thing. I'm not showing every single page or every chapter. Um, I'm not even summarizing all of that stuff because I want you, if you like this book, to please, please, please go pay, go support George. Him and his wife worked really, really hard on this. And we want to support people that are putting out content for our community. These people, uh, whether you use it or not, are working hard to put out stuff for all of us to use. So thank you so much, George. And let's talk a bit about specifically Japanese from Zero Three. Now, pushing aside format and all that other stuff, uh, I did some actual investigative research. I opened both of these books and compared them to the popular brands. Now that would take way too long of a video and it wouldn't fit in my descriptions of the comments if I listed every single one that I did, but I took the market share one, the Genki books, which tends to be if you are maybe new to the, the textbook community, maybe you're just learning Japanese, which is why you're watching this. The Genki books tend to be like 50%-ish of the market share. They're not the most specialized, they're not the least specialized, they're not the most beginner friendly, they're not the least beginner friendly, and they are definitely, at least as of 2021, probably the most popular textbook to start learning Japanese with. And what I found was actually pretty interesting. So this is three books into the Japanese From Zero series. You're learning things like the Thai form, the Tay forms. Oh my gosh, there's a hornet on my window. Gotcha. And for anyone that studied really any amount of time in Japanese, you would kind of notice that, hey, that kind of sounds like the Genki 1 book. And frankly, you would be right. Yes, this Genki 3 is predominantly the Genki 1 book. In fact, I'll actually put an overlay on the screen now, unless I'm lazy, in which case, uh, it's either in the description or in the comments. Sorry about that in advance. But I took basically one piece from every single chapter. Whatever piece in that chapter was the farthest along so I could give the benefit of the doubt to these books. I then compared it to the Genki books, but I also compared it to a couple others. So this book in particular, how did it come out? Well, 
Essentially, every single thing that I encountered except for two were all contained in the Genki 1 book. So almost nothing in the Genki 2 book. There was two pieces. So this is firmly either the middle to end of Genki 1, maybe breaching, starting that sweet, sweet penetration into Genki 2. But I'm gonna ask you to reserve judgment really quick because there's actually a reason that I think that that is the case. I know when I first did that math, I was like, wait, I have to buy three books to get what I can get in Genki? Uh, but the truth of the matter is these are actually priced kind of interestingly. So this is the workbook. This is the both the way you learn it and the workbook to which you learn it. And in the Genki books, they're just the books, and then you buy an additional book that is a workbook. There is five books in this series, and if you were to buy both Genki books and their workbooks, there's four books. And if you look at the price, at least right now on Amazon, they're within $3 of each other if you do that. $135 and $138 US. And likewise, I did that exact same exchange for this this Shaw book five, and I found out that this really was predominantly uh, Genki 2. There is four out of the 13 chapters that are still in the Genki 1 book at the farthest, uh, but I would say roughly this book, and I presume book four, um, are more or less the Genki 2 book of the series, and the Japanese from 0, 1, 2, and 3 are like Genki's book one. Now I've counted the pages, I have gone through the Genki books with their workbooks, including these, uh, and, and yeah, you're talking about roughly the same in amount of work. There's probably a bit more work done in this one, and this is definitely at a slower pace than Genki. But the prices are comparable. The pages are comparable. What you learn, more or less, plus or minus, is basically the beginner level. I mean, you're, you're really getting to the point where you're talking about the, the fringes of the bulk of what is beginner. I did not discount these books at first. I didn't even when I was studying it. And then the more I really got into how these compare to the other major beginner books, I'm feeling a lot more par for the course than I was at the very start. Now, I do have three notes uh, that I tended to say, if you are going to pick this or the Genki or Mina, the Japanese beginners, hopefully not the Japanese for dummies, uh, any of the online resources, if you're going to start from anywhere, um, in particular with these, I would say ask yourself and, and figure out about yourself three questions that have to deal with your ability to study. The first one's format preference. There are people that, you know, really respond to the Genki book format. Um, there's people that look at that and it is completely boring and horrible and nobody wants to hear about Tanaka-san anymore. There's a reason in these books uh, that we don't just open up a dictionary and start memorizing words or sentences. And it's because it's boring. We're like literally all quit. If, if the learning a language came down to just memorizing a dictionary, uh, I wouldn't have done it. And so the whole key to figuring out what we're trying to do is balance. You're trying to find a balance of what teaches you what you need to know for the price. Like what is a, what, what do you consider a beginner book? What do you want to be able to do after that book? Especially if all prices are the same. And you're weighing that against how boring it is to take in that information. So obviously a dictionary has probably everything that you need, but it is so freaking boring. My mic peaked just hearing the, the despair in my voice. Likewise, uh, watching anime, probably quite fun, but if you have zero ability to study unique words or phrases or anything in that anime, you're just literally watching anime with English subs, you're learning nothing. It is the shallowest of shallow pools. So there's a balancing act. And so what I would do is hopefully check out, yeah, this video, but check out the other ones I did of Japanese from zero one, where I specifically, like I went over the format, told you everything that you need to know about how this book looks and see if that would bore you. If it doesn't go check out any of my other reviews. I have 30 plus Japanese resource reviews of textbooks, of websites, of apps, of everything that you could ever need and compare it to those and see which one seems the most fun for the amount of kind of boring that you're willing to put up with. The second item on my list is speed. Not everybody is prepared to study the language at the same pace. There are people who are at a point in their life where they can lock down in their basement uh, and go 10, 12 hours a day. There's people that, you know, maybe they're, they move to Japan to teach English uh, or are going to do that. So they have a lot of kind of necessity to spend a lot of time on it. Maybe you're in the military and they give you time off to study languages. I have all sorts of interactions with all of those people on my channel and they all need different things. There's also people who are learning this casually for fun. Maybe they didn't get the class that they wanted in college. They have to learn Russian or something and they wanted to learn Japanese. So yeah, most of their language learning time is going to get a good grade, but they still want to learn some Japanese. So maybe next semester they could actually get into a Japanese class and they won't be as far behind as they want to be. That person doesn't need AJAT. 
That person doesn't need MIA or whatever they're calling it now. That person just needs something to kind of wet their fingers in, get into it on a self-study level, and hopefully to enjoy it so much, even on your own, that when the time finally does come that you can devote whatever time that you want to to it, you're addicted, you, you're hooked, you really love the language. This is all going to play into which books that you guys are going to want. This book, you know, I, I'm not even going to argue it. These books don't argue it. This is slower than probably your average textbook in the beginner levels. This is probably on the lower end of the speed spectrum. But there, somebody needs that, and that's what this book is here to fulfill. And the final one is methodology, because it's actually kind of funny. So George uh, has a YouTube channel that goes with these, and he and Matt from Matt vs. Japan were kind of going at it again. It's like three years all over again. They're, I think they're buddies now, so it's not like real drama, but they're, you know, they're kind of, you know, jabbing each other a little bit. And I think this one's about pitch accent. Uh, but you might fall on one of one or the other lines, right? Like, both of them are clearly fluent in Japanese. Uh, I'm pretty sure both of them, or at least I know George for sure does, and I know Matt could if he wanted to, work either in Japan, or they are able to do that. They could work for Japanese companies, they could be translators. They're both, like, great. Nobody would doubt that. Uh, the difference is, one spent a lot of time focusing on pitch, and one spent no time focusing on pitch. And I think that's really a, a cool thing that, you know, someone could do basically the polar opposites there. You know, you have one that, you know, didn't output for six months and you had one that started output from day one. Both of them ended up fluent in different ways with different strengths and different weaknesses, but they both can go to McDonald's in Japan and order and it's like not a problem or read Japanese books or watch Japanese movies work in a Japanese office. And so your methodology is going to be very different. If you want pitch accent, clearly these are not the books for you. They don't they don't have pitch accent. Maybe you don't care about pitch accent. Maybe you're more of just, I want to read manga. Maybe manga is your specialty, not even anime. Like you don't even want to listen to it. Then a lot of other textbooks that have kind of a focus on either pitch accent or, or going over long sentences to try and hone those sentence patterns into your brain. Maybe that's not as much of what you need. Again, this is all answers you guys need to ask yourself. You need to go what do I want to study? What are my goals? How do I want to go about studying and what can I put in? And then hopefully these videos that I put out at least give you guys the chance to save some money because I don't need someone uh, who is willing to do a 10 hour basement session for six months buying this and feeling that like they got ripped off and then writing bad reviews because they're like it's too slow. But I also don't need someone that does need this following that other person's advice and quitting Japanese because it feels impossible. I'm trying to help and, and be a big brother to everyone as best as I can. And, and that's what I want these reviews to be. So I'm going to keep reviewing these. Thank you so much to the people in the community who sent me this series. This was really fun. I was really excited to thumb through these again. I haven't in a couple years. And yeah, let's pass it back to Studio Chad. So there you go. You made it. Great job. We are done for now with the Japanese from Zero series. If I do end up getting the book two and book four, or if they put anything else out, I will be happy to review those. If you guys would like me to review a book that I am not looking at, but maybe you want me to look at it a little bit harder, uh, I have an Amazon wish list down below. All you have to do is purchase a book. Amazon will ship it right to me. That's how these books got reviewed, and that's how I'd be happy to review anything that you guys want me to see. And it means that you guys are going to get a less biased, well, probably a more biased, but more Chad biased Hello, opinion. If you guys like this video or this series, consider liking down below. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, please leave them in the comment box down below. I do personally read all of them. We're nearing 20,000 subs, so if you would be so kind, it would mean a ton to me to get me over that milestone before what I talk about at the subscriber on the outro happens. Other than that, I do make my own content outside of videos. Uh, I publish my own books. This is my how to learn kanji, I guess, attempt uh, with a coloring book that has to do with cool, sick yokai. I'll do a hands-on review of this some other time. Right now, I'm already running late. So we're gonna end the video here. Thank you so, so much if you subscribed. Thank you to the patrons, the manga clubbers. There's like three of you that keep resubbing on Twitch even though I haven't streamed in a month and a half. Those, you people are the champions. So thank you so much. I'm gonna get this video edited and out to you. So I will see you in the subscriber on the outro. Of course, only if you're subscribed. Bye-bye. Alrighty, so we made it. Subscriber on the outro. Hey, what's going on, Chad? Why are your eyes so dead? Uh, what happened? Uh, I am exhausted. I'm very tired, uh, because co I caught, oh, can't say it. I caught the demonetization virus. I was out for two weeks. It was two weeks during school, so I've been, like, doing double time with the remaining three weeks that I have left of school. I also work since I'm not allowed to go 
back to Japan and work like I normally do, so I'm very, very tired. So I decided it was best and pertinent for my own mental health to go take a vacation. So in June, middle-ish of June till the end of June, I'm flying overseas. Uh, I'll keep it a secret for right now. Maybe I'll announce it on a subscriber on the outro where I'm going. It's not Japan. I wish. Uh, I'm just going somewhere that I don't have to work. I don't have to study. I can just breathe out for like a little bit and try and be like a horrible tourist. So thank you so much uh, if you stayed through to this. I just want to let you know that that's going on, but you will not miss videos. Another reason I'm tired is because I've been doubling up on videos. So today I had to make two videos and next week I'll make two videos and the week after that I'll make two videos and that way you won't miss any videos while I'm gone. So all of these will be pre-uploaded. You will get your content. There's going to be uh, kind of a throw together of footage that I filmed in Japan, but that really weren't big enough or robust enough kind of like vlog type things that they couldn't be their own video. Well, now they can be a compilation because I'm going to be away. The St. Chatty's highlights are going to be on there. Maybe I'll even make one of those the uh, the hands-on review of my yokai book. I don't know. I just want to let you guys know uh, that I will not be like immediately reacting to things for like two weeks. I'm taken off. I, I need two weeks to just sit somewhere and breathe out and drink a coffee. So if you're subscribed, if you stayed through to watch this because you're subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.